Hello, everyone. My name is Dan Bossy, president of Ag Resource Company, joined by Ben Buckner, our grain analyst here at Ag Resource. We're going to talk a few minutes about wheat. Now, the month of June, which today is the first, really highlights the key growing time frame across much of Europe, the Black Sea, and through the remainder of the Northern Hemisphere. So with that in mind, Ben, where are we today, and what do you think are hot spots we should be watching? Well, yeah, I don't think everything is, is perfect. We've got dryness developing pretty quickly in the northern plains in the U.S. It's very dry and warming in Ukraine. It's been, of course, too wet in the Midwest, and we've had all kinds of freeze damage in the western plains. So on the margin, we've had some dings to the world crop, we think. So ultimately, as we look forward to the June report, which comes out next week, we would imagine that because condition ratings in the United States have been sliding down for winter wheat, uh, and we, of course, have this spring wheat dryness that the crop probably will come down next week. Yeah, that's right. Conservatively, let's say 20 million bushels, but I think that's probably at the low end. I mean, what we do know is that it is getting smaller, not bigger, and the world cash market seems to be reflecting this very likely drawdown in global inventories, especially in major exporter stocks. So as a lot of the major weather models are suggesting heat in Europe and then dryness in Ukraine, as you mentioned earlier, this is something, of course, their crops are made during the month of June. Uh, as we go forward, uh, what kind of impact could that all have? And uh, then we'll spend a little bit of time on Russia. Sure. Well, what we have found is that, you know, those major exporting countries, uh, Europe, Ukraine combined, really set the price starting, you know, the middle of July, early August. And so if their surplus, what they have left over, you know, minus domestic use, is smaller than last year, prices is going to be higher than last year. So overall, we think that could be a little higher than expected, those world tenders that get executed in the early season. Well, if we look at world prices that went off with the gas tender just yesterday, uh, they were rel relatively aggressive, $190 a ton, some of those kind of things. And, and it looks like the Russians have a crop that's late. I would also mention that maybe the Russians have problems with what we call, uh, uh, you know, the VAT tax, which still isn't rebated. And some cargoes uh, that have been sold in the last six months, people are still waiting for a million dollars back. And so a lot of exporters are not anxious to aggressively sell Russian wheat until they know more about VAT. Any comments? about that? No, for whatever reason, whether it's uh, sourcing wheat in southern Russia or uh, getting wheat from farmers to the world market, it's been very difficult. So, you know, the Russian price in the last four weeks or so has been going up pretty noticeably. Uh, they are the biggest exporter, the world price setter. And so, for, again, for whatever reason, they're not willing to sell, you know, much below $190 a ton. And that's significant. So we are competitive in the U.S. for now. So kind of to wrap it up here, we've got a shortage of what we would call quality wheat in the world, particularly in the United States. The hard red winter harvest, which is ongoing, is showing very variable yields, a lot of low pro wheat. And so if we don't have a spring wheat in Canada, protein will be the key. But generally speaking, it's difficult to be overly bearish of wheat if we get July Chicago to 420 or below. Dan Bossy, Ag Resource, joined by Ben Buckner. Thank you again, and we'll be back next week.